on Sunrise, returning to normal. More vaccine doses are on the way after shipping delays, plus the announcement today to make sure all Minnesotans have access to the shot. We're off to a mild start this morning. I'm tracking rain and snow today and tonight. I'm timing it all out. It's a common virus, but you may not know much about it. BMV, it's a one in 200 chance and nobody's talking about it. The new screening process for CMV developed right here in Minnesota that could save newborn lives. The boys are back. The twins full roster reports to spring training today, but all eyes are on opening day as we learn about new plans to get you back into the stand. And your storage is full and your phone is slowing down. The three things you can do to get your smartphone back up to speed. It's Tuesday, February 23rd. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. We're always talking about Minnesotans getting crafty in the cold weather. And here is a perfect example of that. Hockey Town, USA, War Road, Minnesota. Take a look. Now has two and a half miles of winter weather fun. It's a pandemic product that's here to stay, apparently. Hundreds of you are still talking about Boyd's story from last night. Have you seen it? If so, tell us what you think. Let us know. Use that hashtag right there. It's Sunrisers. So awesome. Brought back a lot of memories of yeah. skating outside. And then it brought back the realization that my skates are actually older than Guy. Oh. Are they? Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> they might be. I think I remember you saying yeah. they were pretty old, Chris. Well, I don't know. They Dust still they still work. Early <laughs> 90s, I think I got those skates. Yeah, vintage. Yeah. Hey, and you know, we'll have some opportunities uh, to get out and enjoy that too with these temperatures just uh, at the in the 30s and the upper 30s. Um, so, you know, uh, even right now they're pretty mild. Now, I'm not I still haven't been getting any data for the Twin Cities area here as uh, some currents uh, we're just not getting right now but for those places that we are seeing like South St. Paul and Cambridge Blaine it's mild temperatures are in the 30s this morning and we do have a wind chill advisory too as a system will kind of track across northern Minnesota this could impact the metro with a few showers throughout the day for the school day planner and then we'll have our chance at snow overnight could see a fresh dusting by Wednesday morning. And it's been a pretty easy morning commute uh, in terms of tracking your morning commute. No crashes so far and uh, drive time still looking pretty good. A quick check of the roads again, mostly just wet in certain spots could have a bit of refreeze out there. So again, still take it slow on those ramps, bridges and overpasses. This is down uh, in Minnetonka at 494 and Highway 7. We have breaking news out of Bloomington. Crews battling a house fire overnight on Lakeview Road. We're told two people inside the home made it out OK. The cause is under investigation. In just a few hours, Governor Walls will update us on how he's planning to get minority communities a vaccine using the state's new vaccine connector. It comes as the state deals with a backlog of vaccine appointments. That's after weather down south delayed some shipments. Jennifer joins us live with details on when things will get back on track. Good morning, Jennifer. Yeah, so you can expect this week a higher number of shipments in a shorter amount of time. And the health department says that means that they're expecting that things to be get back to normal in terms of scheduling and operations within the next week or so. So here's the breakdown. Moderna orders from last week will now arrive between now and Wednesday, while orders for this week will come between Wednesday and Friday. And, and some Pfizer vaccine orders from last week are expected Monday, while orders for this week will arrive between Tuesday and Thursday. And another note from the health department, even as things improve, MDH is concerned about outbreaks at restaurants, bars and gyms. The health department says that there were 23 reported outbreaks associated with gyms and other workout facilities in January. Please do not work out in a gym if you have been exposed to someone with the virus. If you haven't been exposed and are working out, please wear a mask to protect yourself and those around you. And the governor has announced that hy V is now part of Minnesota's pharmacy vaccine network. Chris and Gia, they are expected to administer 10,000 doses this week to people 65 and up. Yeah, it's great news that more places are getting those vaccines. Thanks, Jennifer. Now for the latest vaccine information, pull out your smartphone, open your camera and point it at this QR code. It will bring you right to our VaxFacts page. You can also find the code at the bottom corner of your screen. 
Well, vaccine shipments returning to normal should help move these numbers up. Now, information from Saturday show there's now more than 759,000 Minnesotans with at least a dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. You can see almost 357,000 are fully vaccinated. And we know that 13.7% of the population has at least a dose of the vaccine. That's out of the state's 5.6 million residents. We're waiting for this blue to turn green. Now, Minnesota is blue right now on par with the rest of the country, as you can see, and that means that it's anywhere between 12 to 16 percent of people with at least a dose. The Dakotas, as you can see, are leading the upper Midwest. They're in green right here. That means they have more than 16 percent of the population with at least one shot. Now they're on a short list of other states, Alaska, as you can see, New Mexico, West Virginia, and also Connecticut. This comes as President Biden urges people not to become numb to the 500,000 people who lost their battle to the virus. There's nothing ordinary about them. The people we lost were extraordinary. They spanned generations. Born in America, immigrated to America. According to the White House, more Americans have died from COVID-19 than in World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War combined. A live picture coming from Capitol Hill this morning. Today, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar will lead a bipartisan investigation into the Capitol attack. Lawmakers plan to ask police officials what went wrong, who is responsible, and how the situation can be prevented in the future. We hear from Senator Klobuchar coming up at 630. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. St. Paul police are investigating after finding a woman dead on Sunday. Officers were called to a townhome on the 1500 block of Jackson Street around 2 in the afternoon. Fire medics were there initially responding to an overdose report. Police say the victim found in the basement appeared to have been assaulted. A plan to legalize marijuana in Minnesota is back up for debate today. The House Capital Investment Committee will debate the bill. If it were to clear the full House, the Republican-controlled Senate say they will not consider the bill this session. Governor Tim Walz has proposed a new bonding bill proposal. The new bill comes only four months after the last bonding bill was signed and with a price tag of $518 million. Walz says about $240 million of that will go to preservation projects at universities. There's also money for new housing projects. The Timberwolves have formally announced their new head coach. Chris Finch will take over. The announcement came just hours after the team fired Ryan Saunders. The Wolves have the worst record in the NBA. They do play the Bucks tonight. And that's your Tuesday Morning Rush. Sunrise is live this morning. Check it out. We're in Fort Myers, Florida. People are already on the beach going for morning strolls. Doesn't that look nice? And just down the road from there, Minnesota Twins. They're going to have their full, first full squad workout spring training today. And believe it or not, we're just 44 days away from our home opener at Target Field. And this year, the Twins are hoping to see fans back in the stands. Yeah, the Twins are proposing up to 10,000 fans to start the season, which is about 25% of Target Field's capacity. Twins Senior VP of Operations, Matt Hoy, joined us on Zoom from spring training, where under Florida rules, they can have 2,400 fans broken into pods. He's hoping that will prepare them for what's to hopefully come here in Minnesota. Players feed off that energy from our fans. You know, I, I think it's really kind of a vital component for them and, and getting fired up to play the game. So I'm confident we're going to get there. Yeah, fingers crossed. If they do, the Twins will move to digital ticketing and they're partnered with 3M on sanitation measures to make sure fans are comfortable and safe there. Now, ultimately, though, it's really up to the governor's office on whether fans will be in attendance. The state health commissioner said that she's optimistic about the possibility, but it's all going to depend on case numbers and, of course, vaccinations. But yeah, you guys, it's hard to believe just 44 days away we could see people at uh, Target Field. It's exciting. Yeah, Let's I know. hope it happens. We got the countdown clock, too, going already. Love it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Alicia. All right, Guy, let's get to you for the one thing weather. Take a look at those afternoon highs. They're mild yet again, except we'll see less sunshine today compared to yesterday, and we'll have some showers kind of moving through towards the afternoon and more snow towards the north. Yeah, we had a lot of melting yesterday and uh, we're still above that, that freezing mark this morning. But again, guys, so watch for a little patches of refreeze out. The road conditions are still looking pretty good. This is 169 at Bass Lake Road if you're waking up a new hope this morning. Well, if you're seeing this message on your phone, don't rush out to buy a new phone. That's good advice. This morning, we're breaking down a few simple steps you can take to give your old phone a little breathing room. 
let's start with the stuff you don't need. We're talking about things like QR code readers and document scanners. The apps used to be useful, but over the past few years, Apple has built those features right into the iPhone's camera and notes app. No additional downloads required. Once you get rid of that junk, the job will vary from phone to phone. But there's an easy way to see exactly where you can trim some bytes. Just click on Settings, General, and iPhone Storage. That will give you an in-depth breakdown of what's taking up space. Your photos and videos will probably be near the top of the list. You can delete a few doubles or change how you're backing them up to save some space. In fact, most apps will give you a few options on how to cut down their storage footprint without losing anything important. Android users, it is a similar story. You can start by clearing out your app cache by going into your app settings page and selecting individual apps. Mm, we have so much stuff on there, it gets filled up pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Buy that extra storage and then it's full. Got to get yeah. rid of those selfies, let me tell you. <laughs> 610, a new screening method to catch a common virus. Why it's so important to pregnant moms. Then more rough skies for Boeing after this engine fire mid-flight. Here from Minnesotans who were on board. Plus, a travel bug bites us all eventually. For one Sunriser, it waited nearly four decades. Basically, if I can do it, you can do it too. There's nothing really holding you back. Meet the man planning his first ever trip right in the middle of a pandemic. And make sure you stick around for your chance to win a vacation on us. We'll share today's code word for the Sunrise 5K getaway. That's $5,000 coming up at 630.